Okay, well, welcome to Hands Online uh, Electrical Training Card Number One from Sullivan Training Systems. If you have purchased these cards, this is going to be your introduction into how I uh, designed them and what they're um, intended to do and how you should use them. So this video is going to be fairly simple um, and I want to just make sure you understand the basic ground rules on what you need to do in order to make these things work for you. Uh, first of all, um, the instructions will usually be on the top followed by the schematic of what you're building and then near the bottom will be the actual circuit that you'll be creating and building. So when you see the single line that means that's just the schematic. You're just supposed to read that and understand it. In this case power, ground, load, and switch. And that's the basic component of every those are the basic components of every circuit. One load, uh, a positive and negative and switching and that's pretty much all there is. Well there's wire but we know that. So this drawing is going to show you the schematic of what you're building and then these uh, circuits down here with the double lines those are what you'll be using the copper foil tape for. Okay, So everywhere you see the, the double lines that's where you're supposed to put the copper foil tape. <clears throat> everywhere you see a little uh, blurb right here that's solder. So uh, you'll create a fuse here, you'll put a switch in here, you'll put a motor in here, but you have to have the fuse connected to the positive bus and you have to have the ground connected. So the positive will be here on the left, the ground will be on the right, and this is a ladder diagram. This is a ladder schematic and you need to know how to read those. To read them you actually read from ground to positive. All right, now that's misleading and I understand that but that's just the way these things are drawn and you're just going to have to deal with that. But you read schematics from negative to positive and there's a reason for that and I'll show you that later. But um, so the basic components of the of the card are going to be a system of circuitry um, in the middle and the instructions will be in between them and then the single line schematic is what you're learning because that's what you're building and then the double lines down here are what you're actually physically creating with the components and with the copper foil tape. Um, normally uh, I put a dot of uh, solder at the bottom and the top because if you're going to put alligator clips up here for your um, if you're going to put alligator clips up here for your power uh, coming off of a battery or an old computer power supply or something then um, the foil won't get as uh, it won't get chewed up and it'll last a little longer anyway so the notes on the outside are just sort of general notes so you know on these boards I'll use a ladder schematic system the plus or positive will be on the left okay so all of the notes, um, just the general learn these thing notes um, are going to be on the outside. So building instructions will be in the middle and general notes will be on the outside edge. The way that I expect this to be done is for you to study it and then when you're ready you can start building and the uh, most important thing is that every sheet has line numbers. Okay, so right here we have line number 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So there's 10 lines per page and every page is a different number. So page 1 is 100, page 2 is 200, page 3 will be 300 and so forth. So if you need to email me or if we are able to get a forum up and running then in the forum uh, or either emailing you can say hey I have a question about line 107 or I have a question about line 701 and if that's the case then you can uh, ask me a specific question and say well, I don't understand what you mean when you write what you write on line 101 okay um, and I can try to explain that 
The uh, fuses are just going to be pieces of solder and the wiring that you use should be hopefully 22 gauge solid wire um, because it just holds up better and it's uh, easier to use. The 20 gauge is a little stiff but the 22 gauge works a little bit better. The solder, uh, this is actually 032 but you can buy 022 or 020 or 021. I think I put 020, yeah, I put 020, but it might be 21 or 22. Honestly, I don't know. Um, you do not want to use anything bigger than 032. This, I've had this spool of solder forever, so you won't go through a lot of it. You'll, th this, this, this amount of solder would be enough for probably 15 of these uh, cards, uh, 15 of these sets of cards. Um, you will be using a soldering iron and this soldering iron is like 15 bucks from Radio Shack and uh, you can flip it to 15 watts or 30 watts and to be perfectly honest 30 watts is overkill and 15 watts if you're patient will be more than ample. The biggest problem people have is using too much they use too much heat and the solder goes way too far and you end up with problems. You'll need a pair of um, wire strippers and uh, wire cutters uh, if you uh, have a pair. Um, if you don't, this is a kind of an interesting pair that lets you cut um, on one end and then it also lets you strip on the other end. And what you'll be needing to do is cut sharp angles on these, div um, on these resistors and the like so you can poke them through the cardboard if that's how you want to do it. Um, so it may take a little bit of effort, but you'll get it in there. The um, other part of this that you need to um, appreciate is that you're going to need a meter. If you don't own a meter, you don't need to spend a lot of money on a meter. The meter can be 20 bucks or 30 bucks from, from, from uh, Sears. It, it's not a big deal. Uh, I obviously have a relationship with Electronic Specialties. I like their stuff. They're the ones who are licensing my uh, Load Pro voltmeter leads here. Um, and uh, so I do have a relationship with them, but they, they're not the only meter manufacturer. There are others out there, and Craftsman usually has a tool sale every now and then, and you can pick up a pretty good meter for 25 35 bucks. Uh, the one thing I do recommend, though, is you get auto range. Here's where it says auto. Um, I, I don't recommend a manual ranging meter. People sometimes are penny-wise and pound-foolish, and uh, if there's any one feature to a meter I suggest you have, it's that it be auto range <coughs> only because it eliminates a lot of work um, trying to read the meter because if you are trying to read the meter but the meter is a manually ranging meter then you literally have to be doing this all the time you can't I mean you don't get to stop I mean you have to do that to read the meter correctly so if you're reading uh, voltage or resistance on an auto ranging meter then it's just going to give you the best answer uh, there is to have is so that on the cards I've put meters everywhere you can and should read voltage, uh, resistance, or amperage. The way that I've set it up is you're going to be using the amp meter a lot as a switch because that's going to get you in the habit of using the amp meter and it's also going to get you in the habit of understanding current flow and how it changes. So the amp meter uh, is a different meter in that you have to move the red lead and in most cases you're going to be down here in the milliamp range. Okay, I don't know if you can see that the milliamp range. You can obviously use the 10 amp range and that's a higher range. It's less accurate um, but it, and it, it works. But this is probably where you're going to be and then you have to be on the milliamp setting. Okay, now I have to caution you here because if you're going to use the amp meter the amp meter in this configuration is now a jumper wire. So the, these two leads are now a jumper wire. Okay, So if you were to use them here, for example, I get them in the correct polarity here, if you're going to use them here as a switch, then two things would happen. Number one, if everything's working right, the motor will start running because the amp meter is a switch. And then the second thing is you'd see how many amps are flowing on the meter, which is why the meter is so helpful. And that's how I anticipate you guys will be using the amp meter uh, throughout this process because I want you to become comfortable with all the different meters and how they work. 
The big caution is if you forget to move this back and you decide to start reading voltage again, then you're probably going to blow the fuse in your meter. And the only thing the fuse in the meter protects is the amp meter functions. So it'll still work on volts and ohms, but it won't work on amps, and you need to be careful about that. And I can guarantee you that at least once in this process, you are probably going to blow your fuse. Um, the copper foil tape is uh, available all over the place. Uh, stained glass windows uh, are, are the um, stained glass window suppliers are the best place to get it. Um, my original, you can tell this bag's a little more beat up. Uh, I've had this for a long time. And this is quarter inch, which is fine. And then also there's 3 16 And they're both basically the same price. Um, and both of them will work. I think maybe the 3 16 would be a little, uh, it'll fit these cards a little bit better. But uh, either way, they, they're, they're both okay. And this is one roll is more than enough for all of this. So you don't need to spend more than five bucks on this if you can find this stuff locally. If you order it, you may have to order more, but um, uh, this is uh, pretty easy to come by. So uh, that's basically how the cards work. And um, when you uh, get into this and you start working with uh, the cards and the soldering, uh, what I've done is I've put a piece of cardboard down here um, underneath this, I have an old drawing table, and I got a piece of cardboard. And what I did is I'm going to tape the cards to the cardboard, and then um, that way I can, you know, pick them up and move them and leave them and, and do whatever I want to do, and and so forth and so on. Uh, you could, of course, glue them. You could use Elmer's glue. You could use spray glue. You can use a piece of building foam. You can do whatever you want to do, but um, it, I think it's helpful to have the cardboard underneath just because it gives you something to cut against and you're able to essentially poke. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but you can poke these resistors and things through and they'll actually stand up like that and then you can just solder them and when you want to take them out you can just heat it up and pull them out. So you don't have to do that. You can lay them in and solder them this way, but it it really depends on whatever you feel like doing. Um, back to this real quick. I meant to mention here that uh, I will have on the other cards the actual numbers that you should see based upon my calculations. And it'll be marked as either the voltmeter, the ohm meter, or the amp meter. And the notes should be there to tell you how it works and, and how you need to have the circuit configured. But um, the meters will be marked, volts, ohms, or amps, and then if there's a number that I know that I want you to see, then I put the number in there so that you can do the work and get the same number I get and know you got it right. Um, I'm trying to set you guys up for success, and I'm doing everything I know how to do that. So at any rate, uh, that's the basic operation of the, of the cards, and um, Hopefully it's going to be fairly straightforward and hopefully after the first two or three it's just going to become second nature and you won't have any trouble doing it. Uh, and as we go through this, you'll notice that um, there are uh, cards for a lot of different systems, but the one thing I want to make sure you understand is in the final analysis on every card, if you look at the cards before you start, you're going to see that every single circuit on every single card is the exact same circuit. It may not have a motor, it may have a light. It may not have one switch, it may have two. But it's going to be the same circuit, okay? And that's the key to diagnostics is to understand before you start that a single circuit will be like every other single circuit. And the wiring doesn't matter. This is the circuit. It's not the wiring, okay? You don't diagnose wires, you diagnose circuits, okay? So um, I'll reinforce that as we go through as well. At any rate, uh, that's card one, and that's how the system works. But thank you for your confidence. If you have any problems, let me know. And um, either way it goes, uh, learn something, because you guys are very competent, very capable, and you deserve to get this stuff right. And I'll do everything I can to help you, um, because that's just what I do.